Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video and it's time to let you know how to earn 150 free atoms this week as well as the action hero. Are you ready? We have another very accessible week where all the weekly challenges are fairly easy to do except for one which is bugged for me but maybe you are part of the lucky ones and you are able to do it it's a very easy straightforward one but sadly it doesn't count for me and i will let you know how it works and what's happening on my end maybe it happens to you maybe it won't i hope it doesn't Anyway, you can also earn the Action Hero. It's a heavy weapon and it's pretty decent, especially if you don't have one and you are looking to get a 3 stars legendary heavy weapon for your fights. This could be your opportunity. Anyway, let's move on to the actual guide and I will leave in the description below the links to my camera guide as well as how to craft a lot of camera film just in case you need them for the photograph challenge, there is usually at least one of them every week. So, let's start! Possibly the easiest challenge of the week is killing 5 legendary bosses anywhere in Appalachia. I actually did this one without knowing it was even there while attempting to do Vault 94 raids, the second mission, Meltdown. But you can start at Reunion Fever or any other event that spawns legendary like One Violent Nine, Scorch Earth or... Arctos Pharma in Project Paradise. There are many events that allows you to find legendaries. You can also head to random event spawns or even locations that you know that probably have a legendary or two there like West Egg, White Springs and many others that I'm not going to mention here. If you are having troubles doing this then I will leave you here my latest guides on how to farm legendaries through events and through locations. So you shouldn't have any issues to do this one with that information. Next we have find silo code pieces and this is the bugged event for me. I tried several ways. I tried to find officers without any mission and it didn't count. Then I also tried uh, several missions at the Enclave but once I kill the officer and get the silo code nothing happens to my weekly challenges. I asked a few people and some told me that it's also bugged for them, but a few said that it's working, especially after the update that they did the maintenance uh, on Wednesday. So I'm not sure what's going on with this challenge, but it is surely bugged for some people, but hopefully it's not for you. If you want to do this or attempt to find out if it's bugged or not, you should go to the White Spring service entrance because it's there where you can access the Enclave bunker. Of course, you need to do the first Enclave mission at least to access the bunker. Don't forget that if you are new to the game. And then you need to head to the command. It's right here in the military wing. And then it's all the way up. You access one of these red terminals and then search for one of the code pieces, Alpha, Beta or Charlie. And then you will get a yellow mark in your map indicating where the officer is located. Then you have to head there and search the area until you find it. It's very easy since it makes a lot of noise. We have another mission that is quite easy, but it is a bit tricky. It might seem quite challenging. We had this a month ago and I suggest you to look my previous guide on this because I actually gathered all the resources. I chose five and then I went to gather them even though I already had them in box in my stash but I didn't know this trick worked. So all you have to do here is choose five resources from the list and then basically scrap your box. If you play this game for a while, I'm sure you have a lot of junk in your storage because it's vital to repair things, your armor, your weapons, even your camp. So go ahead and scrap all your bulks. If it's not enough, just get some plastic, especially from the Watauga High School. It's a very nice spot for plastic. And craft bulks again and then scrap them until you're done. It is a very quick and wise trick 
and that will save you plenty of time and the hassle. Anyway, as I said, if you don't have the resources to do this trick and you are wondering how can you farm them, I have a guide that I made last month for this particular weekly challenge where I focused on oil, on aluminium, on steel, on screws and gears and also on copper. So if you want to farm these five particular resources, make sure to check the guide and you will be done with this in no time. 43 atoms, I think it's worth it. Plus you get to keep all the materials that you farm. That is very handy. Well, well, isn't it my favorite type of weekly challenge? Taking camera pictures of wildlife in the cranberry bog. I know so many spots here that I don't really need to change servers anymore. So I started here at the Superior Sunset Farm where I was lucky enough to find some crickets with my team. It is a random spot around this area. Actually, there are many random spots here, but you will probably not find them here unless you server jump a lot. As I said, it's a random spot for events, but you can also find beavers, one or two around this area, like this one walking around. But don't worry, I will show you a fixed spawn for beavers in a little bit. Then we went ahead to kill a scorch beast in the sky and we found some Marlow Kings, which we need for this challenge. So that's handy. Again, I will show you a fixed spot for them later. So don't you worry if you don't find them here as well. For the next one, I headed to the Creekside Sunder Groove, which is another random event spawn where you can find a little bit of everything, including a gulpers, a mega slot, fog crawlers, scorched, super mutants, and the list goes on. The best place to find a dead claw, it's a fixed one, it's here at the Thunder Mountain substation near Motaga. And you can also find some ants, sometimes one of them is a legendary too. In this case, it was, but it didn't drop anything. Hmm? Anyway, we're here for the dead claw, and don't forget to take a picture. We are already halfway done, and then you should go to the floated train yard, where again you can find a lot of different things, such as bugs, like the bloat fly or the blood bug. Sometimes you can find toads, which was my case here toads fighting liberators. I don't mind it, I just take a picture and move along. Keep in mind that snailigasters and anglers are also a possibility in this location. The Lost Home is my favorite spot in the Cranberry Bog. To find bugs, I usually find either the Bloodfly or the Bloodbug, so this is a very solid spot. It is not the fixed one though, so you might have to server jump a little bit if you want to find one here. And don't forget to get close enough, otherwise your camera won't register the creatures and the picture will not count. The bootlegger's shack is my second favorite place to find bugs in the cranberry bog. And luckily enough, I was able to find a blood bug in here without server jumping. That is quite impressive, I must say. You can also find ants, scorch, hounds and some other creatures in this place. Moving north, you can go to Max Farm, which is a fixed spot for Marlocks and the Marlock Queen as well in the lake. You can sometimes find a blood flies inside this house or shack. I was lucky enough to find these three stars Marlock here, never seen before. I don't mind it. Then the Marlock Queen was not in the lake, she was fighting a scorch beast or looking at them a little bit ahead, but it's fine. It's a distraction, I could freely take a picture and move along. For the last picture, I went to Pylon V13, which is very close to Bog Town. I actually wanted to go there, because you can usually find snaily gasters. But hey, I found them earlier at the Pylon itself, so that is great. Don't forget to check Bog Town if you are looking for bugs, snaily gasters or even other creatures. It is a very rich place to look at. The next weekly challenge is something that is very easy to do if you are trying to do Vault 94 missions. In this case it says it's washed out but it's meltdown. Small mistake from Bethesda there. 
but basically all you have to do is you know navigate in the vault and do what they ask you to actually i have done most of this without even looking at the list i first revived two players and that counted as one subtask then i killed two legendary bosses inside the vault at the very end and it also counted as another subtask and finally i finished off with killing crickets and that's pretty much what made me conclude my weekly challenge and claim my 23 atoms. In survival mode, the weekly challenge implements of destruction is a pain in the ass to complete. It took me a long while to do this, especially because it requires quite some farming. It's not like you can do a trick around it. I start at Blackwater Mine in Adventure to kill all the mole miners here and collect the weapons, ranged and melee because we need to scrap both types of weapons. I advise you to do a full run here, outside and inside the mine as well. Kill everything, don't worry if you get over encumbered, you surely will, but we need a lot of weapons to scrap. So just do a full run, but don't scrap it in adventure, okay? You need to log in into survival and should do another run there because you really need a lot of stuff. And when you complete two full runs, that should be enough at least for the ranged one. For the melee, I'm not so sure because they don't always drop melee weapons. It is actually not so common. Ideally, you want to do Uranium Fever, which I was lucky enough to find in survival, actually. And there you will face tons of waves of mall miners and your chance to find melee weapons are higher and it makes things much, much easier. So go ahead and collect all these weapons and then head to one of the workbenches inside or outside the mine and scrap everything. Don't forget to equip your scrapper perk in intelligence if you want to get even more materials out of everything, and just in case you need them for your daily life in Fallout 76. And that's the easiest way to do the first two parts of scrapping ranged and melee weapons in my opinion. Now we need to craft some ammo, don't forget to equip super duper in luck and then ammo smith in agility because they will allow you to craft a way more appear craft. I started with plasma cores because I personally use them but they are very expensive so I don't really advise you to do this if you want to, you know, just do this challenge. Then go for the first option for the electromagnetic cartilage they are very cheap you only need some steel and lead then for the explosive ammo I go for the 40 millimeter grenade rounds you kind of need fertilizer but since i have one in my base that is no issue for me i ran out a few times but all i had to do is wait for the fertilizer to produce more and then collect and craft again that is simple enough in my opinion we are missing the Molotov cocktails and for that we need tons of beer bottles. Head to LM's bunker where you can find over 20 bottles inside. This is my favorite location so far. And you can basically find beer bottles everywhere. Just look on top of things, tables, shelves, you know, even the sofa has some on them. Just look for these dark bottles and I'm sure you'll find plenty of them. However, we need 50. So, next location had to Big Owl's Parlor at Biff. First you need to go inside, at the bar you can find I think at least 10 bottles. Just look again on top of things, tables, in the counter, also in the shelves. Near Biff there is one or two sometimes, but mostly they are in the bar. So don't spend too much time in here, you won't find much. This place was quite surprising to me. I didn't think it had so many beer bottles, but it does. We still need some more, so head back to the outside world. And right on the street, you will see these burned sofas and look how many beer bottles are around it. Just exactly what we need for crafting the Molotovs. I went back to survival and I had enough fertilizer to finish off my explosive ammo crafting and then I proceed to craft 40 Molotov cocktails with all the beer bottles that I have just collected. 
You also need some other things like cloth, oil, and adhesive. But yeah, I really can't tell you how to craft every single resource in the game. Otherwise, I would have a 2-3 hours video, I'm afraid. But I still hope that information here is useful to you. As you probably saw, I ran out of oil, so I went ahead to the Charleston Capitol building to kill some Grafton monsters, because they drop a decent amount of oil, in case you don't know. I think it's the fastest way to farm oil, because you can simply server jump as many times as you want, and you can get sticky tar and waste oil, both things from one single Grafton monster. There is another here at his headquarters, which is very close to the first location. You can even walk if you want. You can usually find him here in this water lake thing. Here he is. And again, you should do this as many times as you need, depending on how much oil you want to get. And then it's time to finish off the cocktails and get the action hero. At long last, it really took me longer than what I expected. Now to finish the video, I'm going to show you the stats of the action hero and then I will do a small test since I have the perks for heavy weapons. As you can see, we get 15% faster reload speed, 25% faster fire rate, and also it shoots an additional projectile, so it's like a two-shot weapon. It is pretty good, but still not good enough in my opinion. Here is a small test in a dead claw, level 91. And I feel like it works really well in VATs, but when you are shooting outside of VATs, it's very difficult to aim and hit things, especially when you are not close enough. But the damage is not that impressive in my opinion. And yes, I'm using the three perks in strength to boost damage as well as bloody mess. So the damage is really nothing that special and I feel like the weapon bugs sometimes as well. Like I'm clicking to hit and it stops sometimes. Also this auto regenerating super mutant bugs and more bugs. <laughs> So, what do you guys think about the action hero? I think it's a fairly decent weapon, but it is not really my style. I would prefer something like explosive or bloodied or put together, because damage is just really, really good. I don't think there is any other prefix that can challenge these two. Or maybe I need another build, because I felt like VATS works much better with this weapon than just shooting normally without any assistance. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you could claim your 150 free atoms for the week. I'm Marta Branko, thank you so much for watching. If you are new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button below to help me grow. Also, I have a Patreon page, as you probably know if you watch me regularly, and the link is in the description below. You can go there to find out how can you help me or support me even further. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I tried to make this video a little bit shorter than usual, but I decided to test the weapon, which took some more minutes. Anyway, I'm going to finish it here, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you very soon in the next video. For now, take care. Adios. Bye-bye.